Oi, 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 hi everyone, I'm Will from Wheels Electrical Services, also known as the Groove Rider of the electrical world, just doing bits. In tonight's episode, what I want to do is, from the moment I started doing uh, periodic testing, electrical insulation condition reports, I've always had a quick checklist that I have on my phone that I check, you know, I use it as a guide, I don't really use it as much often now because obviously I'm a lot more experienced, but I've updated it today to, uh, I'm going to give it to my two apprentices, Ollie and Ebsy, so they can help them out when we do condition reports. All it is, is when I do the condition reports, I just have my own list of spot check things I can check, just so I remind myself as I'm going along. I'd rather go to the observations than rather discover them, if that, if that makes any sense. It makes sense as we go along. What I'm going to do is, as I go through the list, I want to, I'm going to put images. Not all of these images are from that obs, that house the same house that for the observations you know don't grill me for that but at least i'm trying to give you a uh, a visual image of what i'm trying to get at yeah right so before i get started if you could do us a massive favor if you could like subscribe and flick that bean that helps the channel grow yeah one of the first things i start off with is i ask the tenant or the landlord or, the, or whoever's living there, you know, if they know of any problems, because at the end of the day, you're trying to look for it for their safety as well. I explain to them that you're not looking for it to check up on them, that a vandal, you know, try and smooth them off a little bit, you know what I mean? Right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into it. The first thing I do is we start off at the mains is I look at the supply characteristics. I take a photo of that because that will come up later. I make sure that the, the main earth terminal is labeled, it's present, it's the correct terminations. I also take photos of that. Make sure the main tails are supported throughout their lengths, you know, so they can't be pulled, they're not a bit shut in the door or anything like that. Obviously, we have a quick look at the consumer units. Obviously, we're looking at all the IP rates, the IP4X for the top, the side, P2X for the bottom. Also, what I also do as well is we always take a photo of the board cover before we start, and obviously with the board cover off, because usually we do it with my iPad, I've usually got an image of it, so when I'm uh, actually scheduling the board, I can see the cable sizes and the overloads without keep going back. Obviously, I do check it because we're going through the test together. Uh, so some of the, some of the other things that I look for in there is the internal. Make sure that it's been fireproofed from the back. A lot of these mass-produced flats or whatever you want to call them and all that are all in partition walls, aren't they? So they've not fire sealed the back. So you've got whacking great hole coming through through the back i always take photos of that and check obviously all this all the standard stuff like whether the buzz bars and all that are all check the uh over overload devices against the cable maximum cable rating per circuit and you know all that sort of standard stuff really you know whether the uh overloads are to the manufacturer's instructions all that jazz. One of the other things is that you've obviously got to pick up on is whether if the consumer isn't made of metal, whether it's uh, in a combustible cabinet, you know, the positions of it, whether it's in a, uh, a the sole means of escape underneath a wooden uh, staircase, half of them, unless there's thermal damages, then they're, own, they're not much of an observation, but you've obviously got to, uh, you've obviously got to document them. Check on is, uh, we obviously do the RCD test, but I also do the ramp checks because obviously my MET's, uh, the ramp check, I usually put that on the additional note the results for that one of the other things is is that is common when i get loads of others because obviously we get loads of other people's condition reports sent to us to quote to do the remedial works and the amount of times we just get no rcd and that's it straight through it is it's so frustrating I, I can understand that because you know we do have customers where they have their own um, see the things that you've got to consider in the house with rcd protection is cables buried within 50 mil within a wiring zone cables in a partition wall absence of RCD protection for sockets used in general use, sockets used outside, and obviously um, absence of RCD protection in bathrooms uh, where no supplementary bonding is present. Obviously throughout the premises, you've got to check for the cable support or premature collapse in the event of a fire. That is critical because that is to stop a firefighter getting entangled in the cables in the event of a fire. And that goes without saying, doesn't so it? So we go back to the main bonding, we go back to the MET, make sure that everything's secure and sound, You know, make sure the connections are there, make sure they're labelled, that's for the water, gas, structural steel, oil, you know, whatever utility they've got to the house. I take a photo of them all and then obviously we do the uh, R R2 test and one to lead it because there's a lot of people who just cut the cable, push it through so it looks like it's either end because obviously people in the past have been paid to remedial to do it. With the water incomer and some of the gas, I've actually had it with a couple of gas where they've got plastic incomers coming in, is that I make sure I take a photo and I also label it. Right, I hope you're keeping up, it's a bit of a shocker, isn't it? You know what I mean? 
but this is hopefully going to help you in the future you know is you know if you're not experienced yeah. with it so what i look for in the kitchens is the position of the uh, power and lighting accessories towards the hob and oven you know whether they're within 300 mil you know this is a bit of a tough one really because you seem to get you know we all know how it is it seems to be like uh, we wire the kitchen then all of a sudden the kitchen fitter decides to fit the kitchen a different way you know you see it all the time all, all the accessories behind it and all that if it's got thermal damage then obviously it's a bigger issue if it hasn't then is it an issue i don't know it's you know it's up to you it's your progress enough a good observation in the kitchen to look for is the pelmet lighting the pelmet lighting is a nightmare because a lot of kitchen fitters they just used to feed them just like from the from a switch fitted underneath the uh, cabinet to straight out of the socket unprotected you know that's always a nice nice one to look for and usually the actual connections in them are absolutely garbage also is all the appliances all the uh, what we tend to do is i usually pull out all the ovens hobs and all that and i take photos of the observations i had a really good one this year i don't know if you see it on my instagram is that i had a uh, woman with a seven kilowatt in one five twin and earth and it was actually two browns as well it's just like it's comical it's been like it for three years there was no thermal damage to the cable but enough a good one is obviously we're looking for local isolation for all the appliances and all that whether they're on top of the counter whether they're clustered together and all that another common one which i've been getting quite a lot of recently is that you know where you get the uh switch view spurs cooker switches anywhere with the neon i keep finding like the neons have actually come off so you, you could actually physically touch the lens which is now we just quickly move on to the bathroom i hope you're keeping up and all that it's a bit of a tough watch isn't it i know what i mean obviously all circuits have to be rcd protected or have a minimum of complete supplementary bonding what i mean is by complete supplementary bonding is since i've been doing it it's from the 16th edition up to now supplementary bonding went from cross bonding to now you have to take it to a local circuit you know so you've got to check to see if that's complete a few other observations i look for in there is obviously the main light fitting that you can't actually physically touch it from the bar or the shower cubicle you know any any equipment in there has got, has got the relevant isolator where so it's obviously a fan isolator shower shower isolator make sure the light switch is either a pull cord or out out of the room and all the shaver points we've had a couple of good ones recently we've had a couple of broke we've had a couple where the geyser was too lazy to put a double double patrus in uh dry lining box so he cut the back of it out because obviously you have the transformer in the back and obviously you've got to look for the shutters as well you know if the real world ones from the 80s and all that didn't always they used to have shutters so they'd have open terminals you do quite well to find one of them now really to be fair right the next one is the socket out there none of the circuits are mixed what a perfect a perfect observation is to walk around house probably 10 years old everything every accessory is mk look around and there's a couple of hager ones best thing to do is drop them off see what's going on you know because obviously they're they're recent additions aren't they so you know that's enough a good one you find it quite often in older houses what i tend to do is just label the consumer in it because obviously if you go around there to do repairs you know i know you're supposed to carry out like safe isolation but a lot of these people just get handyman to do it you know like it or like it or lump it you know it's the way the world works and it you know what i mean can't not all these abortions you go to are done by electricians clearly are they yeah with a few of the sockets what you've got to look for is any thermal damage any hairline cracks damaged either and that felt good one is when we go around and look for the circuits for the mixed ones is we turn off each circuit go around to each one and build a picture up of how it's been done because the amount of the amount of different circuits you find you get you get up and down front and back left and right you know there's so many different ways you know you're looking for thermal damage damage switches just there's so many switches sockets you find where it works one side works on the other and also have a look due to the lack the amount of uh, sockets where the amount of extension leads there is and all that because some some houses where you've got quite a few where they've all just got one socket in each bedroom you're gonna have extension leads aren't you you know what i mean i think i've got four sockets in my bedroom and i'm still probably not enough you know what i mean and it's gonna like, have a look at is lights and switches what i tend to do is one of the first things i look for is i turn off upstairs light and what i do is i turn off the upstairs lights because it's generally wired lights are normally wired it's quite rare if they're not wired top and bottom you know in a normal three bedroom or sort of size house is what i tend to do is i turn off side light and then i go look at the landing light see if it turns on and off if it's still on and you've turned off the upstairs lights then there's a there's a 99 chance it's a borrowed neutral what that is is that they use a two core as strappers they use a switch line upstairs the ground floor switch they've just linked the they've linked the feed so basically 
that's a borrowed neutral you know that straight away it's one of the easiest finds you'll get we check all the metallics uh, we we go through with everything with a wonder lead anyway and anything that doesn't ring out on a wonder lead we 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 drop off and have a look nine times out of ten it's a dry lining box sometimes this is where you find all the wooden back boxes as well if there isn't any uh, cpc at any of the switches or any of the lighting circuits even though they've got a plastic front you've still got to have covers on top of the uh, the screw covers because you could still conduct you know it could still go down to live the cable could still go down to the back box and then you know you could get hurt from that so the size of the lamps compared to the uh, the accessories you know you see a lot of like especially in the low, lot of old people's houses we've still got the 100 watt lamps they still sell them don't they you know a lot of the pendants and all that are only rated at six getting a lot of thermal damage also with dimmers you get a lot of uh, a lot of people are unaware of that the led lamps are not all dimmable i had it once i've done a i've done a uh, lighting rewire for a lady she called me up and said will can you get around there one of the lights is smoking he got around there and i put we've done a light and rewire i put the light up and she only bought like non non dimmable led lamps and it start one of them started to smoke and all that it didn't cause any damage but i pre-warned them and she thought she was adamant they did but you know on you can see it on the lamp here, it said non dimmable and that's unfortunately what happened but nothing was harmed shit the life out of me though but going around there right now we have a quick look at the downlight one of the few one of the main observations is whether they're fire rated or if they're open back down lights that they have the correct fire hood fitted which is rare as rocking horse shit you know and that is for upstairs and downstairs obviously if it's got habitable rooms above then it's a bigger issue you know being downstairs than compared to upstairs another observation is what you've got to check for is whether if it is in an apartment block whether whether it's actually a concrete ceiling above or whether it's combustible material like like joists and all that sort of caper and one of the main things is is the uh is the terminations make sure that there's no basic insulation visible outside the enclosure otherwise the down lights whether they're in connectors you know we see them everywhere especially with the old uh, 12 volt ones they're just terrible and they the amount of ones i've found with thermal damages is lethal you know what i mean but a few other little observations that i'll pick up on is the uh, smoke alarms the smoke detector smoke alarm with the smoke alarms most of them have to be fitted for a minimum of 300 millimeters away from the wall away from a light fitting away from edge of a wall a loft hatch or anything like that that's another one that you need to pick up on maybe it's not going to be electrical regulation but it could be a note you know it's like uh, i always check the dates on them and all that and if if they're out of date then i obviously do it as a further investigation i know you probably won't agree with me but i'll put it down as a further investigation what i do is i attach the uh manufacturer's instructions to the report and then if the if the customer is happy that he doesn't want them changed he has to write me a letter to and then I will take it off. It just covers my back, you know what I mean? It doesn't sit right with me not having uh, having smoke alarms out of date. It's not like they're a lot of money, is it, considering the value of the property? Yeah, and another good thing it is, is you've always got to check the connections. The amount of times that you get the lazy bastards who just change and they just literally, instead of re-terminate and they just use the uh they put the echo ones up with the other versions and just bring the cables through it's just it's just nasty then obviously you've got all the basic insulation visible we're have a look at the immersion and the essential heating obviously we're going to have a look at the connections we're going to have a look at the support of the cables you know whether they've used the correct type of cables whether they're fire rated you know whether they're supported throughout the lengths and all that whether there's basic insulation you know just general bits and bobs like that you know you find all sorts because you know the plumbers get up to anything don't they they're a law to themselves also we check the immersion that it's got the correct stat with the uh, thermal cut out installed on it to uh so it can't scald the people when it comes to outside i like to check for uh, whether they've used pvc pvc cable outside whether it's in direct sunlight or not um obviously whether it's, if it's a garage whether they've if that that's going back to the original one of where i was on about the supply characteristics and whether if they've exported the earth out top or whether there's been an earth rod installed and just general shit like that and then obviously we're looking for any size of sign of corrosion anything that's gone the amount of outside light fittings that are literally hanging on for dear life you know they've weathered a few <laughs> they've seen a few winters and all that and bits and bobs like that and uh, that's generally how i do it you know and i wonderly absolutely everything and i whip off all the fronts and all that you know I, I try to find the end of lines of all the circuits and all that and 
and uh, if there's any observations i'm sure there is i've left the list below of what all what i've chatted about and all that and there's probably a little bit more i've got a bit bored so right i think that's it for another episode i hope you can like subscribe and all that jazz and don't forget if you're going to be anything today then be electric up the old village oi 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 oi